Well, when I got crowned last year in February, I mean, no one saw it coming, but we you know, immediately stepped into a lockdown. And everything that I planned for the entire year came crashing. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone. But one thing that I've really learned during my entire journey is that it's brought a lot of humility into the entire process. And it showed me what this platform really is and what kind of work you can do because I'm a 22 year old and there was a lot of things that I planned but I never knew how to do it. And to just see how I could surpass all the limitations and really reach out to people and get the work done, it was very inspiring for me. And I think it's very important right now at this point in time with whatever is going on with the pandemic that we have more work that is done by women showcased you know in the society and patents is a great way to do that and that's something that I learned I learned that you know during the pandemic there was no glamour or something it was just it's, it was down to your connection with people you know either it was digitally or you are calling somebody and that's something I think it's unique to my reign I feel nobody else in the future should go through it but I feel that that's very unique that I've experienced as Miss India. But that sounds like it's something that really sort of surprised you. You were thrown into this sort of unique situation. Yes. But and is that something that you feel that um, you know it's true to you that you adapt and change and are able to make something good out of you know bad situations? Absolutely. I feel like it was very challenging. It really tested me to a point that even I got COVID during the entire process, very close to the pageant, and I felt. At that moment, I was really, I was in a mess because it was very close to the pageant. There were a lot of things to do, but I feel like I built that resilience and even that positive outlook to the entire journey that it's had. It's just made me a much more stronger person and with a bigger picture in my mind. Now, I don't look at small goals. I look at the entire picture. And you need to, at this point, start looking at a society frame of mind. I feel even globally when we are speaking, we usually talk okay, it's my country, my, you know, my area, my district, but with Corona coming into the picture, I feel now we need to talk about global unity. That's where it's pushing and that's the direction of every dialogue that I can see. So I feel that's something that I learned during my process and that's something I would want to translate into my work. I think it's interesting with the pandemic because in many ways it was a great leveler. Yes. We're all now facing the same Absolutely, challenge. absolutely. And how do we come together? So do you feel like this has brought us closer together in some ways, in a global sense? I think it has brought us together, but also shown us the kind of differences that exist in our society. It has addressed the elephant in the room. And more than a challenge right now, it's an opportunity for hum mankind to really look at our differences and to make sure that we have more equal ground because it helps everybody at the end of it. We have more women leaders and people from other genders getting into decision making. I've seen this year that there are countries led by women that have done so much better during this situation and I feel that this encourages more women to step into leadership and which is very exciting especially when we are here. And I'm so grateful to have this opportunity because I've seen these women throughout the year because I was crowned really early. I've seen their journey. I've seen the kind of inspir inspiring work that they have done. I've really, like, it's given me a lot of strength to do the same in my, in in my country using my reign. So I feel like regardless of what happens here, I feel like a winner because I've learned so much in this entire year that I've not learned in 20 years of my life. And I would want to, you know, use that in my life. So I feel really blessed to be here. What are some of the things that you're most focused on, you know, in the work that you're doing with the brand and the voice that you now, the platform okay. that you now have? What are you focused on in India? In India, I feel um, this is an issue in India, but it, it resonates everywhere in the world that we have a huge gender inequality here. And this stands out with a very personal story of my grandmother. Um, I, I lost my grandmother when she was 22. She gave birth to my mother and she, she didn't have the proper medical resources to survive. And being an ambitious girl myself, I, can, I could never digest that because she, I feel like everybody has the right to have a dream and to have a life and that was taken away from her. And today I'm 22 and I'm standing at the Miss Universe platform. So life has definitely changed for our generation but it's come with a lot of sacrifices and I feel so many women in India right now they are undergoing that 
they also don't have the kind of opportunities. And I feel that for our, for the human population, for our, our human species, species to change, we need that kind of equality at all levels of our society for women to take decisions and for women to come forward. And that's going to be very exciting for our generation. I feel the youth, there's a lot of challenges that our youth is facing right now. But I feel more than challenges, these are opportunities that can really help us take that leap into a progressive society, yes. It's obviously very challenging at the moment in yes. India. And do you, with those challenges, are you drawing strength out of that to represent your country and fly the flag? Or do you feel like, are you pulled home to, you know, to sort of help with the challenges? Because it is, it is difficult at the moment. I've seen a lot before coming here. Even when I talk about it, I get goosebumps, you know, because I've seen mass cremations. I've seen people lying out of, you know, out of the hospitals. And it's a very difficult situation to be in and to just witness people suffer. But the source of strength that I have is, it comes to me from the people, because I've also witnessed the young people getting together and using, the, using social media like Instagram, Facebook to really reach out to each other and to help getting, um, you know, help each other with oxygen cylinders, with, with plasma, with so many other things. And looking at that resilient spirit that India has within itself amidst all this mess, I feel, I feel very empowered and I feel very strong standing here. And in fact, it's our message to the world. I feel what, whatever is happening to India, it shouldn't be seen as only India because this could happen everywhere, everywhere and anywhere rather. So if we can use this as like a learning example and how we can fight back this virus together because it's not gone yet. Even if we feel like it's over and it's done, it's here. And unless we work together as a team, as a global uh, family, it's never going to go. I mean, really, in some respects, being here and competing in this universe and potentially winning has a lot more in it for you, riding on it for you, than for just winning the crown. I mean, it's yes. So much more. Yes, it's it's a revolution, and for me, um, it means much more because of the situation and th the kind of crisis that India is. And Miss Universe as a brand is so it's so impactful that if this happens, a lot of help can go to India, and also there's a lot of messaging that could go globally. And I'm very excited for it. Whether, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to always, even I use this platform right now when I'm there here, ask, you know, because I have so many friends as delegates from different, I basically have the world in one place now. So it's very nice to get the messaging out there, to ask for, to share and ask for help at this moment. It's very inspiring for me. So, really how exciting. Can you win it? What have you got to do to win it? I'm just going to, uh, I feel this is a great platform to, speak from your heart about what you've gone through and I have gone through a lot this year and for me to just tell nothing but the truth from the bottom of my heart is enough for me and I feel that for and another victory for me is bringing the stories of the women in my country to this platform and to all the women that are here so that they know that these women exist in India is it, something else that I take pride in and I feel that uh, even on the stage that is something I'm going to embody so now you're here, and we're only days away from this year. Yes, I cannot believe. I, I feel like we just came here and it's ending. We is need it, a part two. Is okay. it everything that you expected, or is it somewhat different, or is it completely different? I mean, how does it feel to be here in this moment? I'm completely surprised, actually. I did not expect it to go so smoothly because of all the situation. I think we're taking for granted that we had such a difficult year and for the Miss Universe organization to conduct something so smoothly we'd not uh, face any glitches, nothing. I think I'm really grateful for them to give this opportunity to us and to conduct this in the most safest way possible. So, and I, I know that there's a lot more to come and it's, it's, it's just going to be very, very emotional to see that, you know, the entire world in one place, especially this year, you know, because we've gone through a lot in this year. We've not even seen our neighbors. And to see the entire world in, on one stage, it's going to like leave an impact for years to come, for sure. What would you say to all of your fans in India and around the world as you go into the final days of the competition? What sort of message would you send them right now? 
First of all, I would, I would be very, I would be grateful to them for supporting me, especially during this time. You know, it's, it's very emotional because when they're going through this crisis, they still made sure I got here. They still made sure I was fine, I got here. And they're sending love. I have so many people, uh, young people that have got, gotten the virus and they're still sending me messages like, do it, you can do it, you're doing so great. And I feel it's when people support you during their difficult times, you can see the love really shining. And that, that's the kind of blessing that I've got this time. I want to thank them for that. And I want to say that even if I'm here, my heart so, solely lies in India amongst the people and whatever is going I am sure we're gonna we're gonna go through this and we're gonna get over this phase but I really insist people to really take care of themselves and their families to stay safe and you know hopefully we meet on the other side of this phase yes so how are you feeling are you feeling nervous excited Wait. to be very honest I'm feeling all of those feelings in different different parts of it but mostly I'm feeling very grateful to have this opportunity, especially during this time. It's just very flooring for me. In some countries, sport is like the national pastime. That's true. But in the Philippines, some might say that pageantry is the pastime. That's true. You know what, in the Philippines, we have pageants all over the places. Yes, we have pageants in the barangay, in school, national, local. That's why we really love Miss Universe. It's like it's giving pride and putting the Philippines back on the pedestal. That's why there is an added pressure as a candidate coming from a pageant-loving country. But it's a good pressure. I always look up to our former Miss Universe Philippines. They really did well in the competition. And now this is my time to show who I am, you know, to offer what Rabia can show to the rest of the universe. So I'm very happy. Um, and at the same time, I'm excited to make all my Kababayans proud. And hopefully I do. Why do you think it is that the Philippines love pageants? They have appreciation for beauty. We do love pageant because we, we used to think that um, we wanted to be included in, in the world, you know. Uh, I have to be honest, in the Philippines, my skin color used to be not the standard of beauty. I was obsessed whitening my skin because these are the kinds of beauty queen we see um, on the mainstream. But things were different now. That's why I'm very proud to be a morena in the Philippines. Um, we call it morena. It's brown skin girl. And to be able to represent, you know, my color, my identity as a true Filipina. Tell me about your journey to being crowned Miss Philippines. That, you know, in a world that, uh, in a country, I should say, that loves pageants. That must have been a very intense process. Tell me about, you know, your journey to being Miss Philippines. Well, my journey was crazy. You know what? I started to be a dark horse. Nobody noticed me. Nobody knows I was in the competition up until the preliminary and the coronation night. And when I won, I received different comments. Of course, there were people who didn't expect me to do well, who think that I cheated. That's why I, I need to redeem myself in Miss Universe. I really need to do well in this competition. And the thing is, I, I love pressure. I love criticism. I get better every day with that. You tell me I cannot do that, I turn to you, and I, I'm going to say that, no, I can do it for myself. Good for you. So how does it feel then to be on the global <laughs> stage? How do you feel to be here in this month right now? It's crazy, but I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the support, not just from the Filipino community, but also from Thailand, um, Latin countries, who do appreciate me as a candidate, as a person. It, it motivates me that I am beautiful, I can offer so much in this world, and when somebody believes in you, it gives you that extra energy to really do well and perform well. Do you have a sense with the girls, all of the girls competing, you're competing, but is there a sense of camaraderie with all of the girls? Is there a, like a real spirit to, you know, sort of um, motivate each other to do better? You know what? I have a different idea about Miss Universe. I thought it's going to be very competitive in a healthy way. Well, of course. But now I can see every girl helping each other from fixing those hairs, from trying to zip up those outfits. It speaks of 
the closeness and the kind of camaraderie that we want to have. The goal of Miss Universe is not just to crown one girl, but also to build a genuine and long-lasting friendships among us. Would you say within the Miss Universe world, the contestants, is there a sisterhood? Are you sisters? There, there is sisterhood. I can say I was able to talk to different um, representatives from different backgrounds, different cultures. And despite our differences, there's so much to be highlighted in what um, binds us together. And, and that is because we want to empower women. We want to have our advocacy. We want to speak for the things that we love. And that's, that's a celebration of women and the beauty that we have. So coming out of this week, obviously you would love to be crowned Miss Universe. Of but, course. <laughs> and that, that would be wonderful, of course, for any of you. But what else will you take out of this week? What do you think you'll feel at the end of this week, regardless of the result? How will you be a different person? It's, it's the growth and the development that I was able to have during preparing for this journey. I will be honest, there was a moment that I lost my identity because I was put under pressure. I was in that position in which I feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not a good representative of my country, but I was able to bounce back stronger. And if I was able to do that for Miss Universe, I will be able to do that in life. That is my greatest takeaway from Miss Universe. Okay, so Philippines have a huge amount of fans. Yes. I want you to give us a little bit of a message to the fans here and at home. But send a message. What would you say to all the fans in the Philippines? To all my fans from the Philippines and from all over the world, maraming salamat po. Thank you so much for loving me and for believing in me. It means a lot to somebody who is so naive in this industry, who has no idea how to become a beauty queen on the first day of my journey. But because of your love and support, I was able to be the woman that I am today. And regardless of the result, I may or I may not win the crown, but one thing is for sure, I'm gonna make you all proud.